to begin our quarter, we will be studying energy and waves. Our sound unit goal, as stated by the state and the district, is to compare the properties of waves to wave-like properties of energy in earthquakes, light, and sound. In other words, the learner or the student will understand that earthquakes, light, and sound are all types of waves with unique properties and there are differences and similarities between electromagnetic and physical waves. Prerequisite knowledge of what you should already know about energy is that energy can be transferred from one object to another by rubbing them against each other. Other ideas you will learn from this unit and that you should be able to explain at the end of this unit is how energy is like a wave. Also, the similarities and differences between the waves that produce earthquakes, the waves that produce light, and the waves that produce sound. No matter what type of wave is formed, the movement of energy is the reason for the formation of the wave. In other words, when energy moves from one place to another, it often travels in the form of a wave. On this slide, you will notice some important vocabulary relating to waves and energy. Be sure to study this vocabulary and be able to use each word in a sentence to prepare for your upcoming vocabulary test. You may be wondering, what is a wave? A wave is an oscillation or pulse of energy traveling through a medium. In other words, a wave was created when a source created vibrations. Those vibrations sent wave-like disturbances that spread away from the source. The type of waves we will focus on will be mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. The difference between those is that mechanical waves travel through a medium and electromagnetic waves do not need a medium to travel. Do you know if sound is a mechanical or electromagnetic wave or if light is a mechanical or electromagnetic wave? That leads us to the next question. What is sound? Since sound transmits energy, it is a wave. It begins with a vibration that produces waves that move through matter. Because it travels through a medium, sound would be considered a mechanical wave. A medium is matter or anything with molecules. While all waves share some basic characteristic properties and behaviors, they do have differences that are used to group or categorize them. One such category is the movement of the medium compared to the motion of the wave. This motion determines whether the wave is transverse or longitudinal. With transverse waves, the motion of the medium forms a right angle with the motion of the wave. However, the motion of the medium and the motion of the wave are parallel with longitudinal waves. To help you gain a better understanding of longitudinal and transverse waves, let's look at P and S waves produced by earthquakes. P waves are primary waves. These waves move in a compressional motion. Imagine placing a slinky on the table with one person on each end of the slinky. If the person on the left end pushed the slinky toward the person on the right end, that would create a compressional motion. This motion will cause the slinky or medium to vibrate in the same direction as the wave. This type of motion is characterized as a longitudinal wave. Now consider the S or secondary wave. Imagine that the same slinky or rope with the person on each end. If the person holding the left end vibrates the slinky or rope up and then down, the motion of the medium will be perpendicular or form right angles with the motion of the wave. While the rope will be moving up and down vertically, the wave will travel horizontally from the person on the left to the person on the right. That particular motion is characterized by transverse waves. A longitudinal wave can be further characterized by the distance of the wave at certain points. 
Take a look at this diagram of a slinky being pushed from left to right. There are two gray areas on the slinky. These are points where the coils of the slinky are pushed tightly together or compressed. Hence, those areas are called compressions. Adversely, there are other areas on the slinky where the coils of the slinky are not so close together but instead spread far apart. These areas of the slinky are noted as rarefaction. To determine the length of a longitudinal wave, simply measure the distance from one compression to another. Now, let's analyze the characteristics of a transverse wave. These waves can be close together or spread far apart, but the terms compression and rarefaction are not used to describe this type of wave. Think about how we see our heartbeat on the monitors at the doctor's office, that up-down pattern. Transverse waves work the same way. They start with a source, which can be drawn as a straight line. That source either displaces the particles up, then down, or vice versa. If the particles goes up first, then that particle will create a crest, which is the highest point on the wave. However, if the particle is displaced downward, a trough will result, which is the lowest point on a wave. The wavelength in a transverse wave is determined by its distance from one crest to the next one or one trough to the next one, much like the picture that you see here. The crest is the highest point of the wave and the trough is the lowest point of the wave. The wavelength, as indicated by the green arrow, is the distance from one trough to the next one or one crest to the next one. The wavelength of a wave is not the only part of the wave that can be measured. A wave's amplitude and frequency can also be measured to show the height and pitch of the wave. The amplitude or volume of a wave is the measure of the height of the wave, which also is affected by the amount of energy in the wave. That means when a particle is displaced upward, the height it went from equilibrium will represent its altitude. And that altitude is directly affected by the amount of energy in the wave. Frequency, on the other hand, describes the number of waves that pass a point each second. The more waves that pass, the higher the frequency. A wave with a high frequency will have a high pitch. A wave with a low frequency will have a low pitch. Amplitude and frequency both measure the sound created by the transferring of energy through a medium. However, they are represented by different units of measurement. Amplitude or volume of the wave is measured in decibels while frequency or pitch is measured in hertz. Be sure to study the slide for examples and abbreviations for each of those unit of measurement.